imagine you dialed your bank and uh, the ivr is throwing these two options so option 1 and option 2 um go through these op so option 1 is you know dial 1 for banking dial 2 for credit cards dial 3 for home loans dial 4 for blah blah, blah. option 2 is for banking dial 1 for credit cards dial 2 for home loans dial 3 for defaulters or default dials for whatever uh, to speak to an agent dial 5 something like that um, between these two options, um, which one you think is better? And uh, well, why? So all of you are saying saying option two. I mean, I haven't seen anybody saying option one, uh, which is cool. Um, uh, so so exactly. So this is a this is a real implementation of your sensory memory example. Um, you know, by that, if you say you know, dial five or, or dial four, if you have a default or whatever, right? Um, and usually, sensory memory typically will stay for maybe a second, maybe maybe two seconds. And by the time you know, okay, you know, uh, if you have defaulted, by the time you finish the sentence, because of whatever reason, you will you will not remember which number to dial. So. So number, because the number is at the end, it's easier to remember that number. Okay. Anyways, so so that that's a that's a real implementation of how IVRs really uh, implement uh, the concept of sensory memory. And and by the way, this has been researched right based on this data. Okay. Um, remember those those websites, those applications where um, um, where we really have to wait to load and I mean nowadays it's it's not uh, really the case I mean most of the sites are really fast but then there are these sites which you click and then you're waiting waiting and it's loading and you know, and, and then you're still waiting right uh, <clears throat> so you know if if you have a conversation with a developer saying hey I can't load it for whatever reason this is a good um, um, justification from from your the way brain works point of view. Uh, so if if the transition between screen A or to screen B or something to something else X to Y is 0.1 second. Uh, in, in reality, it's below 0.5 or less. Um, it gives you an illusion that it's almost instantaneously. So you click. And it happened. That's that's how it feels like. Um, if it's happening around one one point five seconds, it it seems uh, seamless. So you don't really have to lose the context. So you're still in the context, and then you know it's 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 fairly good. Um, and then if it's around ten seconds, um, you have to fight uh, to stay in the context. So you start losing the context because stuff is happening around you, and then you your your memory wanders, and you you know attention wanders to other places. So so ten seconds is not good, and then if it's more than ten seconds, then usually people are lost. So so they they go away. So a good idea to to load uh, or the transition from X to Y is around one one point five seconds, maybe two, but don't go beyond two. Um, now, in some cases, you may have to go beyond two uh, because you know loading um, uh, will take time or for whatever reason. In which case, uh, the the best idea is to show a loader at a time. Okay, and um, if you can't show a time, then at least show a loader. Right. So anything beyond two seconds, one point five seconds, you ought to show a loader so that people know. Okay, it's some something is happening. Uh, now that that's from the point of view of how brain works right that's 